Hi everyone, it's Troy from Complete Healthy. Um, I just want to touch on uh, being isolated at, at the moment. Um, not not with the virus. I mean, if you're broken up with a narcissist, you're probably and you're watching these videos, you're probably feeling very isolated, very alone. Um, the narcissist will have been lying to your friends, your family, behind your back the whole time you were together. This will to make you so while they're talking about you, how good you are to you, they're telling your friends the opposite and lies. So that way, when the breakup eventually happens, because it will, it always will. They've they've been planning it the whole time, so everyone is going to believe what they what they're saying. And the whole time you've been together with the narcissist, you've been praising them to everybody. So. Why wouldn't they believe the narcissist? The whole time you've been together, that you've been together, they've been bagging you out. The whole time that you've been together, you've been praising them. And now all of a sudden you're flitching, flipping the switch. You are going to look crazy. Um, and we all do it. We all fall into that trap. <clears throat> the thing is, they choose the weakest links to do this to. The ones that really know you, the friends that know you inside and out, know you better than that. And the narcissist knows them better than that. So they won't be trying to do that to them either because those friends will probably stand up for you as well and won't like them talking bad about you. The people the narcissist will be targeting will be other codependents, will be other narcissists. So if they're more of an overt sort of narcissist, they might be targeting a covert sort of narcissist, somebody that likes drama, somebody that's always in the middle of everything, but it's never their fault. Um, they'll even tell you they don't like drama, but they do. Um, and then there'll be all the other people that are just toxic. They've, they've probably got a lot of stuff going on they're not dealing with as well. And then you become the target. When you become the target, it's them looking externally. So remember, I'm always going to be talking about looking internally. So healthy people look internally, self-reflect. Narcissists cannot and will not do that because they're shame-based and they're too weak to... Um, look internally. They don't want to deal with what they've got going on. There's too much shame. <clears throat> There's too much guilt. And the people around them are very similar. Um, they'll all have drinking problems. They'll all have drug problems. Um, either that or they'll just be tied up in so much drama, it's unbelievable. Um, and they'll always be the ones to, you know, sort of help people and all that. But it's always under, under the guise of, of to get something to be liked, you know. And um, as a codependent, you do that too. Uh, you know, I'm not just going to point fingers at them because we do a lot of the things that they do until we snap out of it. Um, and these friends, you can afford to lose. In fact, it's a good thing that you do. Because if you've heard the analogy of crabs in a bucket, have uh, you ever seen when you put a heap of crabs in a bucket and one tries to get out, the other crab instinctively tries to pull them, hold on to them, and pull their way out on the other crab. But what happens? The other crab, of course, falls back into the bucket. So they're just in this perpetual cycle of trying to get out the bucket and pulling themselves back in. And the majority of time, they'll all stay there. Um, some will break free, some is what you are. And um, yeah, you don't need to be pulled back in the bucket. Let them go. You don't need to explain yourself to these people. Um, they will probably side with the narcissist because there's more drama there. So it's easy to side with some, to side with somebody that is going to help you look external. So they've given them a target. And the narcissist, don't forget, will be manipulating them from the start of your relationship as well. Exactly the same way they manipulated you, they will be manipulating these people as well. It will all come out eventually. The narcissist will, have, because it's all transactional. They'll only be doing it to get something. They're, they're only doing it to get certain things, to get them to do certain things for them. 
and all that sort of stuff. Eventually, that'll run out, same as what it did with you, and then they'll see the real them. Might take 20 years, might take two months, but eventually, they will. I mean, you only have to look at their past. A lot of narcissists um, don't have one group of friends. They've usually got three or four groups of friends, and they behave differently in every friend group. It's so that they can lie to those friends, lie to those friends, lie to those friends, never telling the same lie, and the two paths will never meet. It lets them get away with a certain amount of stuff. <clears throat> so these are called flying monkeys. The term come out of the Wizard of Oz, funnily enough. Um, you know, when the um, the witch is on top of her palace or whatever it is, and she's like, go and get them, go and get them. And, she's, and all her flying monkeys go out to do her bidding, to go and try and get Dorothy and all this sort of stuff. Um, that's where the term come from. Because the, man, the narcissist will be manipulating the weakest links to do everything for them. They won't know that the narcissist is doing this. They think that they'll just be part of the team. And that's what they want. Um, they'll be too scared to say, well, I don't think this was right. Because they want to impress the narcissist. Um, they're very weak individuals. And um, the narcissist is playing them just like they played you. So, you know, don't be too hard on them. Uh, eventually... They'll get the same fate as you. Um, so what I really wanted to cover on this is being isolated. So don't look at it as being isolated and you've lost all your friends. The good ones will stay. The toxic ones that are holding you back will go. It's a good thing. Another good thing is when you get rid of toxic people, healthy ones come in. If you're working on yourself, you will attract the same sort of people. So you start making healthy connections. It's something to look forward to. You know, if you look around, the people that are living, you know, a pretty bad sort of life, usually all their friends are as well. You are who you hang around. You know, if you want to be rich, hang around rich people. If you, you know, you want to be fit, hang around fit people. It's pretty simple. If um, you want to be a drug addict, hang around people who take drugs. So... You're actually bettering your life, and they are actually helping you as a good way to look at it. They are taking the trash out for you. Um, and in most cases, it's probably not something you'd want to do yourself, even though I highly recommend it. As soon as the breakup happens, this is part of the no contact. Any single person that sides with the narcissist or still has contact with the narcissist and doesn't, um, doesn't respect your wishes, delete them. I deleted third-party people. I deleted like 200 people the first day. Um, you do not need to know what they're doing. You do not need for the flying monkeys to be drip feeding you lies or making stuff up or telling you things that the narcissist has told them to tell, to tell you. You don't need any of that in your life. If you've told people, I do not want to be friends with anybody that's friends with the narcissist and they remain friends, well, they're not your friend. Block, delete, out of your life, done deal. Go make some healthy connections. It's hard at the moment in the current climate, but you will. You will. It's the same as looking at negative things on Facebook, the news. Look at the headlines. Uh, look at the trend lines, not the headlines. The headlines are always negative, they're always bad. But if you actually look at, at the trend lines, we're actually living in one of the safest times there has ever been. And that's very important to remember. And when you start making healthy friends, these friends will have healthy boundaries. The other friends probably didn't have healthy boundaries. It's very important when you're healing and taking this time in isolation is very healing if you do the work. Because being codependent is all about having all these relationships and, and being around people, needing, needing to be around people all the time. And now you can't, now you're being made to heal. So don't stress about it. Don't worry about that. Use it as, oh, well, while I'm here, I might as well do some healing. Learn to sit with yourself. And then when everything starts clearing up, well, now you can start getting out. Swapping some bad habits for good habits. Instead of going night clubbing, go to the gym. You're going to meet a better sort of person. You know, just, and I mean that in everything, you know. Go to somewhere where they're doing yoga out, out in the park or something, you know, back when all that opens up. 
You can even do it online now and meet people doing yoga online or personal training online. There's lots of things you can do now. And you will become who you're hanging around. So make sure you're hanging around good people that you aspire to be. Then the people with no boundaries, they um, it all it all seems like a big family at the time. Um, you know, oh, my house is your house. No, just come in and help yourself and all that sort of stuff. Yes, you can have a few people like that. Only a few. Nobody has that many real friends. When shit hits the fan, you will see who they are. So don't worry about losing people. You're not losing good people. You're not losing people that are there to help you. Real friends don't encourage bad behavior. I know that if I start started acting er erratic now, my friends would be like, Troy, you know, you, you need to pull your head in. And I would seriously consider what they say because it's not criticism. And that's something that we'll, we'll talk about later on because if you're just new to all this, you probably would take it as criticism. Um, whereas the friends that you're probably losing now would encourage all of that bad behavior. They, they, want, to, they want it in for a laugh, you know. They want to see you act like a tool because they laugh. It's funny. We're at a, at a party and you're acting like a douche. Well, you know, everyone's going to get a laugh at your expense. Um, but it's not getting you anywhere. It's Groundhog Day. You're going up the hill Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to party, Friday, Saturday to come down the hill, only waiting for the weekend again. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, miserable. Friday, party down the hill again. It's the same roller coaster over and over, the same people over and over, and nobody is going anywhere. Nobody is bettering themselves. Your goal in this is to better yourself. And by better, I don't mean you're above them at all. These are all equal. Everybody's equal. Roses bloom at different stages. That, that's all that's happening. Unfortunately, some people don't bloom, and that's fine. That's their choice, and it is a choice. They don't have to stay in in these patterns of behavior that they're doing. And the good thing is neither do you. And now if you've watched The Matrix and you've taken the red or blue pill and you've woken up, well, you can't, you know, you can't untake it. You can try, but it won't work. Um, so being isolated isn't a horrible, horrible thing. It's actually a really good thing. It's a healing time. Um, you'll feel you will feel betrayed by these people. Um, you might feel embarrassed, um, hurt, but don't be. There are better people coming, people that will value your opinion, people that you can trust. Because right now you're probably feeling like you can't trust anybody either, but you can. If you're a trustworthy person and there's billions of people in the world, chances are there's other trustworthy people out there. You are not alone in that respect. So just don't think just because you are you are hanging around some crabs in a bucket that weren't healthy that everybody's like that because it's, it's just not like that. Everybody has some degree of toxicity. Everybody. Nobody's perfect. Um, but the ones who are working on it are the ones that you want to hang around. The ones who are doing the work are the important ones. The ones that will tell you to pull up are the important ones. Don't worry about the flying monkeys. Why would you? Why would you worry about people that are not going anywhere and not doing anything? They haven't accomplished anything. There's no substance, no value. Everything's surface level. There's no respect. Um, why would you respect somebody like that? Why would you let somebody treat you like that? They're no better than the narcissist. Some of them will just have been manipulated and they won't know any different. So, you know, if some of them wake up and come and see you and apologize, well, that's one thing, as long as their behavior changes. You know, we believe behavior changes, not words. But there's very few and far between. 
these people don't like to admit they were wrong. That's another thing. Learn red flags. Learn what all red flags are, and you'll see that all these people probably had every red flag under the sun. Everybody's going to have a couple, but it's whether they're working on them or not. So I will cover red flags in another post. But just look them up. And then look at the green flags. The green flags for what you want in a healthy person. Again, I'll cover them in another post as well. But don't look at it as you're alone. Look at it as you're evolving. You're leveling up. You're becoming you 2.0. So that's what this healing adventure, this journey, this hero's journey is all about. And it will become addictive. You will be doing things that you thought you never could or would, just that you always wanted to do. You'll realize that these people were holding you back. Surround yourself with people that are doing something. They're not just living in that circle on repeat. They're the people that you need in your life. Now, family. Just because they're family doesn't mean they're not toxic. If you have to cut family off, you have to cut family off. I was very fortunate in that my family know me better than that. And they were there through my whole relationship. And they saw the other side. Um, so I didn't have to do that. But I have before. If you need to cut off toxic people, you have to cut off toxic people. It doesn't matter if they're family or not. It'll feel bad because if you're watching this, you're probably a guilt or a shame-based person as well. So you will feel guilty about it. You will feel shame about it. But part of growing is doing what's right for you. Once you heal and you're stronger and you have good boundaries, you have good self-worth, you can always go revisit that and um, you know try and make friends again or make family again if they have worked on themselves and see if it's right for you. But trust me on this. You're not isolated in a bad way. It's actually really, really good. All right, I hope this helps and um, you don't feel so alone now and you've got something to look forward to. Catch you later. Hi, everyone. It's Troy from Complete.